Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here with Karen King. She is the founder of Production Without Borders and also part of the team that launched Toronto One, which is now Sun TV, and also part of the team that launched The Kink in My Hair, known and loved. Thank you very much, Karen King. Congratulations, and thank you for being here with us. Thank you very much for having me. It's wonderful. Wonderful. Uh, Karen, a few questions for you. What does receiving this prestigious award mean to you? Sometimes, you know, there are days when you think that what you're doing is, you're wondering why you're bothering, you're wondering, you know, it's really kind of a lonely task sometimes, and sometimes it feels very thankless. Um, the work that I've been doing over the last 25 years has really involved mainstreaming diversity and trying to get the industry to be more open to working with talent from various backgrounds and to recognizing that there is added value that comes with people from different backgrounds and, and really speaking to today's audience. And sometimes that really feels like you're banging ahead against, your head against the wall. And so when the phone rang <laughs> and there was this lovely voice on the other end of it saying, you're being honored as a woman of honor. It was like manna from heaven. It was really such a gift. Um, and it made my day, you know? It would have made my day even more if there was a $100,000 prize attached to it. <laughs> but boy, it was really wonderful to just, to, to feel like, wow, people are actually noticing what's going on. Because you feel like you're working in a vacuum so much of the time. I mean, I was working in corporate environments where there were very few people of color, very few people who really understood what I was doing and trying to accomplish and, you know, trying to get them to hire people of color on every single show that I worked on was often a, a difficulty because people were accustomed to working with who they were accustomed to working with and taking chances and working with new people wasn't something that they were comfortable with all the time. So um, Productions Without Borders was really um, a couple of conferences that I've held so far that um, brought um, diverse talent in contact with American broadcasters who were coming up here because they saw the opportunity to really um, have a really powerful business model by shooting in Canada and wanted the diversity that, that reflects their audiences in the US to be showing up both on and off screen and so I was, an, I was access to that population for them and gave people here an opportunity to, to introduce themselves to networks like NBC and ABC and CBS and Fox and so forth and I'm now writing a book entitled Productions Without Borders which really explains and has actually developed a process, I've actually developed a process for inclusion within the film and television industry so that people can understand what it is, if I'm the AD, what do I do to make diversity better? Or um, if I'm the location manager, what do I do to bring in today's audience? And, and so it really takes it down to the grassroots level so that people really understand that you are Every one of us, every single person on the team can make a difference in creating a product that is more marketable to today's audience. And, uh, and for them not to be afraid and feel like it's a threat or a danger to have new people coming into the industry. And that it really is an asset for all of us to be able to work together and work well together. And for people of color who've been working in the industry for a very long time, who've actually learned not to share who they are because it's unwanted or it's dangerous. This process that I've created sort of helps them understand that why it's important for them to share themselves. On that note, Karen, what advice would you give to a young woman? A young woman doing what? <laughs> a young woman striving to achieve her goals in a general way or maybe even specifically interested in entertainment and production behind the scenes. I think the most important thing for any of us, young women, young men, is to really believe in yourself. And sometimes that's hard because, you know, something often happens when we're very young that makes us doubt something, doubt that we're lovable, doubt that we're smart, doubt that, you know, we can do it. And, and we have to really re reprogram ourselves to believe that we can. And regardless of all of those negative thoughts, we have to push them aside and, and do what we want to do anyway. Like really, I think the most important thing for us to do is really set our sights high. You know that, that story that says aim for, the, aim for the moon and if you hit the stars, you're, you know, you'll, you'll be all good. Um, really set your, 
your sights high and have integrity. You know, do what you say you're going to do. Um, do a complete job. You know, do what people expect you to do. Um, you know, like just make excellence the way that you function, you know, and that will be what stands you in good stead. You will, you know, you really start to erode yourself when you don't keep your promises. And, um, and you don't only erode your reputation in the world, you erode your sense of yourself for yourself. And then that makes it even harder for you to believe that and trust yourself and do all those things. So really it's about, you know, being true to yourself. And if you say that's what you want, everything you do needs to be going towards that. And you don't do anything else that's going to detract from that or distract you from that or slow you down from getting there. Like, just keep your eyes on the prize and, and act in a way that you're never going to be ashamed of. And, um, you know, make your mom and dad proud, you know. <laughs> Even if they didn't make you proud, you make them proud because you're going to be the one, you know. Speaking of making people proud, who in your life or what woman, past or present, has inspired you? Wow, that's a really interesting question. And there was a time in my life when there was nobody. I would have said nobody. My mother is a huge inspiration to me. Um, she was a French, English, and Spanish teacher. Just a woman whose heart is, you know, as big as a mountain and bright and learning every day, still taking classes at Blendon when she's 83 years old and traveling the world and just curious about everything and everyone. Um, Oprah Winfrey, definitely, like, again, another open heart, person who shares themselves, people who are actually able to honestly share themselves authentically, I have so much admiration for. Um, you know, there are people who in my career have been really inspirational to me. Claire Preto was a pioneer in the film and television industry um, who really was instrumental in me working at the National Film Board. And, um, and she is one of those women who has just been strong and a wonderful role model about, you know, just going for it and, and, and being, being able to, to do what you have to do without approval. You know, and that was hard for me because I was one of those people who always wanted to please people and make everybody happy and thought it was all, you know, that was a really important thing. And she really taught me, you, you know, you got to do what you need to do regardless of whether people approve of you or not. Um, I also had women in the industry who have, were wonderful mentors for me, like Barbara Williams, who was my general manager at Toronto One, who brought me to global television when I moved there. And... Um, was a wonderful, wonderful sort of role model who showed me that you didn't have to be, uh, you know, nasty and, and horrible to be a manager and leader of people. You could actually be kind and feminine and, and fun and, and, you know, all of those wonderful things. And, um, and so, you know, it's, there have been a number of people in, in my life who have, um, have really sort of helped me along the way. So it's really wonderful to get this honor, which is about paving the way for others, because I, my career has been a career of working with first-time filmmakers. And whether it was Clement Virgo and, you know, Rude, which took us to the Cannes Film Festival, and, you know, or Nisha Pahuja and Bollywood Bound, or Jari Osborne, or, or, um, or Cyrus Sundar Singh and the Film Club. Like, the number of films that I have had the, the joy of kind of watching people make their first work and kind of, you know, um, midwifing them through that process. Um, it's been amazing. It's been an amazing, wonderful journey. And I'm coaching people now and just being able to, my, my filmmakers often call me the wind beneath their wings. And when I, when I, you know, acknowledge them for what they're doing, the people that I'm, the participants that I'm coaching right now, when I acknowledge them for what they're doing, it, I, it's like, it's better to give than to receive. I just get off the phone and I feel so fantastic because there's amazing things everybody's doing every single day. And there was a time when I felt like that was taking something from me. You know, I felt like oh, I was making everybody else's dreams come true but mine. And now I just realize there's nothing else to do but pave the way for others.
Thank you very much, Karen King. You have the name of royalty, and you're a royal, royal woman. Congratulations. Karen King, uh, founder of Production Without Borders and recipient for BBPA Exchange Women of Honor. Congratulations again, and thank, thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It really made my day. Thank you. <laughs>